Welcome back, folks. In this video, we're going to take a look at series parallel circuits. So we're going to combine what we've learned about series connections and parallel connections to analyze more complicated networks. Let's start with something along this line. I'm going to have a single power supply over here. I'm going to say that's 30 volts. And I'm going to hook up a couple of resistors. Let's say that's 8K, that's 3K. And before I forget, let me label a couple of points. I'm going to call that point A, point B. Over here is going to be point C. Now, normally I would just take another resistor down, but instead we're going to do something a little bit more intriguing, which is to put a pair of resistors over here. There's a 6K and there's a 12K. All right, when we look at this circuit, we discover that it's not entirely series and it's not entirely parallel. If I got rid of this 12K, we would have a nice series circuit, right? Remember series, current through every component has to be the same. So the current through the 8K has to be the same as the current through the 3K. And in this case, without the 12K in there, that would also be true for the 6K. We'd have a nice series loop, right? But with the 12K, that doesn't happen because the current would go through the 3K and at point C it can split. But it's not entirely parallel either because there would really only be two points in the parallel network. The voltage everywhere would be constant rather than the current everywhere being constant like in a series circuit. Well, you know, we've got this 8K and the 3K. So they don't have to see the same voltage as this. As a matter of fact, the 6 and the 12 don't see the full 30 volts. Now if we had gotten rid of the 8 and the 3, you know, if we shorted them out, yeah, we'd have a parallel circuit. So we have a series parallel circuit, right? It's part series, part parallel. The approach to this is to break this up into little sub circuits and then you apply your series rules to the series part and your parallel rules to the parallel part. And we essentially simplify the circuit in a series of stages and then we build it back up, okay? So the first thing you would do is try to identify those things that are in series and those things that are in parallel. Well, hopefully it's obvious by now that the 6 and the 12 are in parallel. So I'm just going to say, all right, let me just think of that as one resistor, 6 in parallel, 12. 2 to 1 ratio, it's going to be 2 thirds of 6K, which is 4K. So I'm going to redraw this. And you could maybe do this in a couple of steps or one step, you know, the, the more experience you get with this, the more you'll actually be able to, to just sort of do it in your head. But I'm just gonna do this in a couple of steps. So here's my 8K, there's the 3K, right, points A, B, and C. And then I replace the pair with their equivalent, a 4K. Now I can see as a series circuit, I've got a total of 8 plus 3 plus 4, which is 15K. So this reduces finally to this. You know, very similar to the very first circuit we ever looked at. And I know that's going to produce a current like this. And there's going to be 30 volts across the 15K. And from that, I can use Ohm's law and find out what the current is, right? That's just V over R. 30 volts over 15K, which is 2 milliamps. Now I can take that 2 milliamps and return it back into the original circuit, or, you know, the halfway circuit if you prefer, because I know that's the current coming out of my source. That's 2 milliamps, right? This is 2 milliamps. And I can now start putting down polarities for things. We're back in the original circuit, like so. Well, I can use Ohm's law on this. 2 mils times the 8K, right? So the drop across that first resistor, 2 mils times 8K. The mils and the Ks cancel. That's got to be 16 volts. The drop across the 3K, similar. It's got to be 6 volts. So I'm just going to put that over here on the original circuit, right? There's 16 volts 
across that. There's six volts across this. And finally, you can say, look, I got two mils through the 4K, the equivalent, because let's face it, that, that two mils, even though we know it's going to split between these two resistors, right? Some of it's going this way and some of it's going this way. I know that the total current has to equal the current that entered node C, Kirchhoff's current law. Summation of currents entering has to equal summation of currents leaving. Oops, forgot the I. All right. So I can look at that total resistance as far as the total current, say 4K times 2 mil, that's got to be 8 volts. All right, well, let me just do a, a KVL check, right? Summation of voltages rise has to equal summation of voltage drops. 16 and 6, 22 and 8, that's 30. That equals my rise of 30 volts. So I pretty much have everything, right? I know this is 8 volts across there. Knowing that, I can now find the only two things we really don't know um, are these two currents. And I have options, right? I can just come in and say, um, let me just do a, um, an Ohm's law. So the current through the 6K, as an example, would be 8 volts divided by 6K. And the current through the 12K would be 8 volts divided by 12K. Right, so you're you're going to get um, let's see two thirds and one and two thirds mills. One and one third, sorry. Um, and that should add up to the entering current, right? One and a third and two thirds is one and three thirds, which is two. Right, and what we started with. Okay. Or, or, because there's more than one way to do this, you could use current divider rule. I know the entering current. It's 2 mils. So if I want to find, uh, as an example, the 6K, I can do the same thing. I have 6K. It's going to be 2 mils times, remember, it's the opposite resistor. So that would be 12K over the total of the parallel. 6K plus... 12K, right? So that's 12 over 18 or two thirds. Two thirds of two mils is uh, the one and one and a third mils. And you could do the same thing with, with the uh, 12K, right? That would be 6K over 6K plus 12K times two mils. You could also use a voltage divider rule. Instead of immediately going back and finding the current like I did here, right? I said, oh, there's 30 volts, 15K, give me two mils. You could just do a voltage divider rule. You know, if the question was, what's VC, what's the voltage from C to ground, you could just say, oh, well, uh, 30 volt source, right? Take my source voltage, multiply by the resistor I'm interested in, which is the 4K, and then divide by the total value of resistors that that voltage is impressed upon. In other words, 15K. And that will just give you the appropriate value, right? 4 fifteenths of 30 volts is 8 volts. And then now that you know that voltage, you know, you could use, um, kind of like I did over here, you could use uh, Ohm's law to find the currents, right? And then uh, add those two currents together. That would give you the entering current. In other words, that would give the two milliamps I found over here. So, you know, there isn't a single right way to solve these things. It all depends on, you know, what kind of maybe comes up in your mind. Now, granted, some are going to be more computationally efficient than others. Some are going to require fewer steps, and that just comes with practice. You work on these things, and you start to see little things that, uh, you know, you can see the second, third, fourth step, and you say, yeah, that's, that's a, a faster way home, right, rather than just sort of plowing through. But when you start these, just look for the things that are obvious. Like you say, yeah, those two things are in series. So I could have done this um, a little bit differently. I could have said, well, that's 11K and 4K. And then B, I'll do a voltage divider between an 11 and a 4. So, you know, I'll do 11 over 15 times 30 volts, and that'll give me the voltage across that pair. Right? That's a possibility. Um, it's not right or wrong. 
you know, as long as you follow the rules, KVL, KCL, use things like Ohm's Law and the current divider rule, you'll be okay. All right. All right, let's take a look at a, a different one. This time I'll, I'm going to use a current source. Now let's make this an 8 milliamp current source. And I'm going to put 12K over here. 2.5k over here, what? 2.5k. And I'll just put another parallel set out here, different values, a 2k and a 6k. Okay. Call that point A. Call that point B. And, you know, typical kind of questions, right? What's voltage A to B? What's the current through the 6k? those kinds of questions so you know where do we begin what's obviously in series what's obviously in parallel well kind of like the first one we can see that these two things are in parallel right 2k in parallel with 6k well let's see that's a three to one ratio so we're going to get three quarters of the smaller right one and a half or you could say it's you know product sum it's 12 over uh, eight so that's going to be one and a half k ohms so an intermediate circuit might look like this. Here's my point B. Now ask yourself that question again. What's obviously in series or parallel? And hopefully you notice that the two and a half and the one and a half are in series, right? Whatever the current is flowing through the two and a half, that same current has to flow through the one and a half. So we could make another equivalent circuit. And if you're looking ahead, you might notice something else. So anyway, the two and a half and the one and a half is going to get us 4K. Now, we have subsumed point B. Point B is gone. That's okay. We know where it, we know how the 4K got there. So now we're back to just a straight parallel circuit. I could go one step further and say, you know, what's 12K in parallel with 4K? That's going to work out to 3K. All right, yeah, 48 over 16. Um, knowing that it's 3K, you could immediately find VA. Right, because now you're saying it's this. Eight mils, eight mil current source feeding a 3K resistor. So that's straight Ohm's law. All right, that current's gonna flow down like this, plus to minus, this is your point A. So A to ground, oops, I was lazy. I forgot to put my grounds in here. All right, be good. So VA is going to be 8 mils times 3K, which is 24 volts. Now let's go back. I know VA is 24 volts. I can go back to my first circuit and say, hey, this is 24 volts. How do I want to break it apart from here? Well, you might notice that, you know, this current's coming in at 8 mils, right? Some of it's got to go this way. Some of it's going this way. So you're going to get a drop plus to minus like that. You're going to get a drop plus to minus across the 2.5. At B, it's going to split again. Plus to minus on the 2, plus to minus on the 6. You know, what do I know? Well, I know VA, actually, from A to ground is 24 volts. I already know the voltage across the 12K, right? The 12K is sitting like this. This is ground on this end. This is node A, which I know is 24 volts above ground. So I know there's 24 volts across the 12K. So the current through the 12K would have to be 24 volts divided by 12K, which happens to work out to 2 milliamps. Now, what does that do for you? 
Now, where do you go from there? Well, let's look at a couple of possible ways you could go from there. If that's two and eight came in, Kirchhoff's current law tells me there must be six going this way. So this is, this is going to be like a jigsaw puzzle, right? Or a crossword puzzle. We're going to get little pieces and they're all going to either, you know, come together, so to speak. The whole, the problem falls apart as the, as the puzzle comes together. So if I know that that's six mils from Kirchhoff's current law, right? Eight in, two out this way. So there's got to be six out that way. I can use Ohm's law to find the drop on the two and a half. Right? So I multiply that out with a drop on the two and a half K. Once again, the K's and the millies to cancel, and you got six times two and a half. All right, so that's going to be uh, 15 volts. So I know there's 15 volts across this. Now what? Well, I've got options. Ah, we have so many options. Look, KVL. Here's the first one. KVL. I've got 24 volts from here to here. So remember, no matter which path you take from one point to another, from A to ground, you got to come up with the same voltage. So you know, if I went this way, there's got to be 24 volts across the current source. If I go down this way, there's got to be 24 volts across the 12K. If I go this way through the two and a half and then through this pair, either one, it won't make any difference because they're in parallel. Parallel resistors have the same voltage. That's got to sum up to 24. Well, I've already taken care of 15 of it. Here's 15 volts. 24, 15, what's left over? All right, what's left over by KVL would have to be the 24 I started with, the 15 that we dropped here. It's like being up on a ladder, 24 feet up off the ground. You climb down 15 feet. How far are you above the ground? Nine feet, nine volts. Now that you know it's nine volts, you can use Ohm's law to find these two currents, All right? So we know VB now is 24 minus 15 or nine volts. And now I can use Ohm's law. So the current through the 2K would have to be nine volts over 2K, which is a four and a half mils. Similarly, the current through the 6K would be nine volts over 6K. Okay, which is a mil and a half. That adds up to six mils. Why is that important? Because that's the current we know was going through the two and a half. Kirchhoff's current law, node B, what comes in, six has to equal what exits? Four and a half plus one and a half. Okay, a different thing you could have done. Because that's just one way, right? Lots of ways you can attack this. So let's get back to the point where I said, hey, there's 24 volts and there's two mils and I've got six mils. So you could say, all right, well, that six mils flows through this pair. So VB, right, entirely different way of doing this, is to say that pair of resistors, which we know is equal to 3K, sees a total of six milliamps um, flowing through it. So, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, my bad. Not 3K, I'm looking at, I'm looking at uh, the wrong thing here. That pair is one and a half K. Bad, bad teacher. All right, anyway, um, one and a half K times six, what's that give you? K's and mills cancel, right? One and a half times six, you're looking at nine volts. Okay, so the nine, you know, that, that's a cross check, nine volts plus the 15 volts got us back to the 24, right? Uh, as a matter of fact, that's what we calculated the other way, nine volts. Beautiful. And, but, and this is actually a good technique. You know, when you, when you do homework, when you work on this kind of stuff, try to do it multiple ways. You know, it helps with some familiarity. Uh, anyway, now that I have VB and I know it's nine volts, I could use my Ohm's law to find uh, the individual branch currents. Or... Or 
knowing that it was six mils coming into node B, you could use current divider rule. So you could say, well, what's the current through the 2K? Well, that's the entering current, six mils, times, right, the opposite resistor, which is 6K, over the total, 2K plus 6K. All right. Okay, so that's, you know, six over eight. So um, three quarters of six, which is what? Four and a half mils. And then you wouldn't have to do a current divider again. There's Kirchhoff's current law. If I figured out that six is coming in and four and a half of it's going this way, then it must be the case that the difference, one and a half, must be going down through the six, right? As we calculated before. So lots of ways you can do this, right? Do you want to use Kirchhoff's current law? Do you want to use current divider rule? Do you want to use a voltage divider rule? Do you want to use um, KVL? Uh, do you want to break things apart, you know, step by step and focus on Ohm's law? All of those rules, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a set of tools, like you got a kit, right? You got a set of tools and it's kind of up to you and how you want to use them. There isn't a single right way. Uh, you just have to sort of look at the problem. As I said, some ways might be a little bit more efficient, fewer steps, but as long as you follow those rules, you're going to get the right answers. You're going, you're going to get the proper values of currents and voltages and so on and so forth. Um, I have not talked about power in, in this, but you know, once you have the current and the voltage, or the current or the voltage and the resistance, you can calculate power. That's a very straightforward kind, kind of computation. Always remember the power generated has to equal power dissipated, which is a sort of a final check there. Okay. All right. Um, a good thing to do at this point would probably be to do some cross checks on a simulator. Okay. See you in a bit.